Hey folks, Aaron here. Welcome back to my anime review. Today we are looking at Darling of the Franks, episode 24, which also means the series has ended. So I'll be talking about the series too and my thoughts on it. Now, to keep the, I want to say, episode review short, because this was kind of a, I don't know, it's one of those endings for me that it works in a lot of senses, and yet there's something about it that also just, it felt like it was just really overly happy of an ending. I don't know how to put that. Like, I don't know if it's like... I, I don't dislike the ending. I don't I want to put that, point that out, folks. I don't dislike the ending. I think the ending is fine. I, I liked it. I liked how... You know, I loved how this whole episode kind of had this dual story being told where we have Hero and Zero Two in space. You know, they're trying to go through this other galaxy to destroy the Verm completely. And, you know, you, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna spoil in case you haven't seen it, but I, I don't know if I feel like I love the way that ended because of the fact that it really has this almost whole hum ending to the to the fight that they have, you know. I love the whole sequence. I think that was great. And animation wise, you know, it, it's definitely trigger right there. You could definitely see it with the whole Gurren Lagann references of, of just giant explosions and stuff like that. So I mean, it, listen, that was great. I love that scene. But you know, the uh, dual. I think what actually for me was stronger of a, of a story was the kid survival on the Earth because. You have them, you know, trying to build up society. You know, have Goro, for example, going around and, and trying to find um, other humans and see if anyone's alive still. You have the kids in general trying to, you know, rebuild, uh, I want to say, farmlands and try to make these these foods, you know, make different foods and stuff like that. So this way their society continues on. You have them reawakening the other children that were sleeping, essentially. And, you know, as time goes by, they're not aging correctly. So it's like... You know, for some of them, they're aging accelerated rates where, um, you know, the heavy set guy, he, he, I always forget his name, so I apologize for that, folks, but, you know, he was getting older as time went by, and you could see it in his face, like, you know, he had a mustache, his, his hair was graying on the side, and he was just, he got taller, etc. But you have, like, the other characters, like, for example, Goro, and, and his, you know, um, What's her face? Uh, not not to me. Oh, she, Ichigo. I, I was I, I was thinking because I was thinking my my verse my other version of this review before, which is I had to cancel out because I got interrupted midway through it. But I, I was talking about uh, not to me at one point because she had come back, and I was like th that was a whole different thing. So that's why in my head I was thinking of her. But Ichigo is you know now a mother to herself. She's not aging. You know so they, those two aren't aging, and even uh, the annoying kid who I can't stand. I always forget his name too. His name is so complex it's like the, the, it starts with the z but you know he they're not aging correctly so they're they basically look like kids still they look like they're still teenagers at best and you know i, I kind of think that was almost kind of a, a bittersweet thing to it because it's like some people are aging around them some people aren't and you know they're having kids and the kids are aging and here they are not you know so i, I really liked the earth story i think that was the the, the highlight of daughter of the franks uh, last episode and then, you know, what was cool was um, Zero Two and Hero had this whole thing where eventually one day they would re reawaken on Earth. You know, they would re-meet, even though they, they swore their love to each other. And it was, that was really nice. I, I thought that was actually really probably the highlight of their their little story. And then you see a, a little kid version of Hero and then a, a girl looks like Zero Two running and they kind of end up meeting again. So it's like, you know, these they're not them per se, but they're probably like reincarnations of them, if you want to call it that. And that was cool. I mean, I, I like that. You know, it's just that I don't know why I don't have this this overwhelming love for Darling of the Franks anymore. Darling of the Franks to me was a series that it had a lot of highlights and a lot of moments that I feel were, you know, almost trying to be too hard like other trigger works. Like, you know, even like Kiznaiver or Gurren Lagann. Where, you know, they went for some very unorthodox methods of, of telling a story. And I love that about Trigger. I love that about A1 Pictures where they could do it too because they've done it really well in Cloverworks, obviously, which is basically A1 Pictures. Um, you know, that's really cool. I, I always I always like when stories take the, the usual cliche concepts and kind of throw them on their sides. But I felt like at times, Darling of the Franks definitely went into this, oh, how crazy can we make things? Can we do, you know, let's make aliens now. Throw in aliens, you know. Let's, let's have... Zero to become a living robot. You know, it's like these things are, are overly goofy, and it's not that they're per se bad, it's just that your reactions are like, what the f what happened exactly? Because you're just lost for words at that point. And that's what I think Darling the Franks kept trying to do too many times in the series, where it wanted to like start off with this whole, uh, I want to say, things that almost turned everyone off. Because I remember the very first few episodes of Darling the Franks. 
everyone hated the show. For the sheer, well, I don't say everyone, but you know, a decent majority hated the show because, oh look, you have the the pilots, you know, you have the guys behind the girls basically riding them to pilot them, and I was one of those people. I was like. Well, I I was in the middle ground where I didn't like that per se, but at the same time, I'm like, well, it's a different way of, of piloting robots, I guess, right? You have, you know, the guy behind, like, I mean, it's very sexual in its own right, but it was also very different, you know, versus like every other version of, of Mecha where you always have them in a cockpit and, and you know, controlling controls with, with just either joysticks or with their hand movements and stuff like that. And you had the girl basically becoming the body mitt of the darling of this or excuse me the frank in this case i don't know why i said darling the frank and then you had the guy riding her legitimately it was very strange but i know so many people that hated it because of that and then darling the frank takes this backseat to that where they're like no we don't want to keep doing this because we know we're kind of pissing people off in my mindset i, I feel like so they changed the story up to be more dramatic. They started having these things. And I'm not saying that they didn't know what they were doing. I'm just saying that it feels like that shift happens where they wanted to change things up so they had more of a focus on Hero and Zero Two. And we started having this love relationship triangle happen. And we started having this love rectangle thing happen. And all of a sudden you had characters falling in love. You had characters getting married. You had aliens appear out of nowhere. You had the, the realization that Earth was actually the home of, of these Klaxors. And then, you know, the Klaxors were, t were basically overridden by all these other things it just became this crazy story and i mean that's typical for trigger trigger always does crazy stories so it's like I, I expected that much from it but the same token i feel like it changed too many times for its own good that's why you know my enjoyment of donald franks has always been this wavering thing where it, let's put we'll put it this way like one week i'll enjoy it to the point that i loved it i'm like oh my god i love this episode i thought it was great and then another week i'd be like mm, that was good I enjoyed it and then there'd be another week where i was like okay that was an okay episode whatever and then it would go back up to the top again they would go it, it was like a constant mountain of love hate love hate for me and i think the last several episodes have been definitely the strongest love and hate i've had for the series where i've i've loved some of the concepts they've done with the alien stuff i loved how humanity strive to get this you know uh, the ability for immortality kind of push them to the limits and cause them to find the Klaxors and you know the queen of the Klaxors etc I love that I thought that was so cool I thought that was very interesting and, and almost something realistic you could see in the real world happening and you know later in, in, in the long line of, our, of history I should say but I also felt like they went too crazy with it because they started adding alien races coming to earth and, and showing themselves as transcendent beings that wanted to fuse everyone together and have all the souls bound to one object and one coil rather than having it where people had their own individuality they were now just one living organism and that is where the story for me definitely went wayward now you know notice how i'm not talking about the animation i'm not talking about the music i'm not talking about the voice actor or anything like that or voice acting excuse me anything like that because all of that for Darling Franks was amazing. You know, the voice acting, the music. I loved the opening and closing. I don't think I skipped the opening more than like one or two times because I just want to get to the episode. The endings were both very good. The animations for the openings and closings were great. The animations during the fights, during the regular moments were great. You know, there was a lot of detail in the settings. There was a lot of detail on these characters. Even the mecha were really well done and they were very unique. All of that I don't even have to talk about because it was prevalent from beginning to end where this show was just gorgeous and this was, you know, anime at its best, in my mind at least. It's just the story is what pulls me away from loving this show. So that's why, you know, Darling of the Frank for me, if I had to rate it between an A through F, I'm going to have to give it a S. I want to say a B. I know that might piss some people off because like, what B? That's kind of high still. It's a show that I enjoyed. You know, it's not I hated Darling of the Frank. I never felt like I hated the show. I had episodes I didn't like. I had episodes I did hate. But I never wanted to not watch next week's episode. I never went like, oh, I hated this episode. I don't want to watch any more of the show. No. I had those episodes where I like, oh, I disliked this episode. I really hated it. I thought I could have done something different. Can't wait till next week. I still want to see what happens next. And that to me is an enjoyable show. That to me is a show that I enjoyed and I think was good. And I, like I said, the animation, everything else about the show was so phenomenal that I can't give the show to me anything lower than a B because a B minus I feel like would do it to less justice and, and anything lower than that would be just, I don't know, something weird just in general to me. So, 
Don't Let Franks was a show that if you're not if you haven't seen it yet and you're now thinking about checking it out because I, I haven't spoiled obviously everything about it and there's still a lot of stuff that you can watch from the last episode and, and you know I didn't want to spoil specifically certain things that happened certain relationships that happened etc but what I will say is that Don't Let Franks be prepared for usual trigger stuff you know trigger is known for doing crazed stories I said it once before in this review already and I mean it don't go into this expecting the normal mecha. This is not going to be a normal mecha. This is something outrageously different. And there are times where it shifts away from mecha because it wants to focus on these character narrations and these character stories and the relationships between these people and the survival elements that I think the series picks up because of that because it doesn't stay just on mecha. If this show would have been all mecha, B- minus might have been maybe the highest I can give it. Maybe C- plus would have been what I would have probably stuck with. Maybe. Depending on everything. But because this show has a lot of heart to it, because it's very different in a lot of senses, and because there was this wow factor to the show and many times, and, and you know, even when the episodes were kind of like meh, I still wanted to keep watching it. That is what I think is the best thing about Darling the Franks, that it was just so different that it's enjoyable different. But what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with me? What do you think? Do you have different opinions? Please let me know in the comments below. As always, I love hearing from you guys and commenting back. Trust me, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you think otherwise. It's just I want to hear what you guys have to say. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great blessed day, everyone. God bless you all. You know what to do if you like my channel. Hit the subscribe button. Check out my Patreon, various rewards and stuff like that. And be sure, like I said, to comment below and stuff like that. Um, I do have a review for Darling the Franks up now at uh, Honey's Anime. I will have a link to it in the description box below if you guys want to check that out. So go feel free to do that. That's a written review. Um, it's a little bit less, um, I want to say, what's this? I want to say, like, ready wise because I don't really rate Darling the Franks. But I do reviews for Honey's Anime as we as our style is. We don't do ratings, per se. We say what's good about it. We say what's bad of it, about it. And some of my thoughts are about the same. I have one or two different things that I go a little some more detail on. So you can definitely check that out. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later, like I said before. Until our pass crossing our next review, everyone. God bless you all. I said that really fast, by the way, but whatever. Have a good one. Bye-bye.